Hey everyone, it's Ed Williams here, and yes, my finger does have a tentacle. Um, but today is the five years. It's been five years since Finding Dory came out, the sequel to not only my favorite Pixar movie, but my favorite cinematic movie of all times, Finding Nemo. And you know, I want to do a video of it. I'm going to tell you what, what I think about the movie, or what I love about it. So, um, let's do a review. Um, so, <clears throat> I love Finding Dory. I've always loved Finding Dory. I've, I've, I've been waiting for Finding Dory ever since they announced the, the ever since they announced it on the Ellen DeGeneres um, show. I was so excited for it. And, um, I got more hyped than hyped. And, and because, you know, I love Finding Nemo, and I really wanted to have a sequel. And they did. Finding Dory. And it's really... When I was little, I was actually interested. So, like, how is Dory going to get herself lost? Then when I figured out that, that the story is about her family, I'm like, okay. Alright, it's really interesting, a really interesting story. So, I'd love to see, see her family, see how it is. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we have our blue, like, so we have our, with our favorite blue tank fish, Dory, who had only degenerate voices. And reprises reprises her role in, in the sequel. Um, so these these are actually Swigglefish um, toys from Firing Dory. I I collected. I don't have all of them, but these are technically like the main ones. Um, now I wish I have. Now I wish I still have my Bruce toy with me, but it's at my dad's house. So this is the, this is the only one I got. <laughs> anyway, but then um, when the teaser trailer came out. Um, a fine Dory. I got so excited, and uh, you know, and I gotta say, I I was so I was yeah, like I said, I was so hyped for this movie, and um, then lots of posters were coming. Then the next trailers got me more and more excited, and uh, oh yeah, we got some new characters. Um, let's do um, Hank the set the the set the purse. Because he only has um seven tentacles and he lost one. Yes, septopus. So um, and you know what? <clears throat> I have to say now, only one. And then we have a, bel a beluga whale, uh, Bailey. Then a whale shark, Destiny. So um, hold on. Let's put Hank and Bailey right here. You know. Right? When, when I heard that Hank and Bailey were gonna be voiced by uh um Ed O'Neill and Ty Burrell, I was really interested because you know what? Ty for those of you who don't know, I'm pretty sure we all know, um Ed O'Neill and Ty Burrell were in this were in this show called um Modern Family. I've seen I've seen like a couple of episodes of it. But then when I saw him in D twenty three that they're gonna be in, they're gonna be voicing, I'm um, fine. Nemo characters. I'm like, oh wow, okay. So yeah, uh, you know what? Come on, before before I talk about Bailey, let's talk about Hank. So, Hank. I used to not like Hank during the half of the film, but uh, but you know what? When Hank started to finally have a heart and instead of becoming all selfish. And stuff, not grumpy. I mean, he's still grumpy, but he's not all selfish and stuff. I started to like him. So, yeah. Hank, it's a really good new character. Bailey. Sorry. Bailey is a funny. I, I say. I wouldn't say he's a. Com, should, I, should I say he, he's a comedic character? Um, I don't know. He's funny. He is, he is a funny, funny character. I don't know if they use him as a comic relief character. I have no idea, but anyway, um, he has echolocation. Um, I like that about Bailey, about or beluga whales having echolocation, and then Top Whale did a great job as Bailey. And uh, I see Bailey as like one of my favorite new characters in the Fine Nemo franchise. Um, all right. Then we have Dory's childhood friend, Destiny. Yes, the whale shark. Um, who was voiced by Caitlin Olsen um, from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, sorry. 
But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I really like Destiny. You know what? She's my favorite character in Fine Dory. I really liked, I liked the, uh, really love the, uh, the relationship between her and Dory. And now we know how Dory learned to speak well, which is really interesting. And, um, she has, she, she has funny moments. Uh, like she's always hitting walls. Of <laughs> But yeah, really, I really do like um, Destiny and uh, and Karen Olsen did a great job. So yeah, we have Destiny. So okay, I don't have any toys with them, but so we have Fluke and Rudder. Um, I know Idris Elba. As uh, as I hope, hope hope I'm saying his name right. He voiced um, I think it was Fluke. I forgot who voiced um. Rudder, or I, I, I don't know which I, I forgot which the names of the characters were, but um, so yeah, they're sea lions. Um, they just they're technically lazy sea lions, they just rest in a uh, in a nice rock. <laughs> um, then Gerald, who technically Fluke and Rudder do don't like, because every time when they're on the rock, they're like, Gerald, get off the rock, off, off, off. That made, that made me laugh so hard. Um, we have Becky, who's a bird, who helped Marlon and Nemo. Oh, on. Who helped Marlon, oh, Marlon and Nemo go to um, the Marine Life Institute. Um, I say she's a. Um, I can't say anything much about her, but I think she's a good supporting character. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Dory's parents, Jenny and Charlie, love them. R really, really great parents, I I have to say. They're actually one of my favorite uh, Pixar parents of all times. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, really great parents. Really care so much about Dory. Um, like, like that, that, that's always the thing, a part about parents. They always care about their child. But you know what? Here's something. Here's what's so interesting about finding Dory. Now, even though it's not as good as Fire Nemo, and it's actually kind of a little more emotional than Fire Nemo, Mako. I mean, I'm saying this because, you know, yeah, sure, the story in Fire Nemo, it is sad. Like, Marlon lost his wife. He lost almost all of his kids from a Barracuda attack. Then, um, but Nemo was still alive, but he had, um, a lucky fin. And then... Nemo gets caught by a diver, Marlon goes around, Marlon and Dory go around the entire ocean to find him. Yeah, it's a really good story, it is sad. But you know, Dory, poor Dory has short-term memory loss, or amnesia, amnesia, whatever. Which, and, you know, <clears throat> so, think about it. She has a, she has short-term memory loss when she was little. She lost her parents when she was little. She searches around the entire ocean in her entire life, almost her entire life. She and then when she, as she was growing up, she started to forget about her parents. So that's pretty pretty sad. Because I'm, and it's kind of a little bit sad than Fire Nemo than in the Fire Nemo story. Um, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I'm pretty sure you all might agree with me on that one. But that, that's what I think. Um, but anyway, yeah, I love, love Jenny and Charlie. Um, hopefully we get to see them again in, in the next film. I'm sure there's going to be a, a next, a third Fire Nemo film. I'm pretty sure because they have to, I wouldn't say Fire and Dory is a finale. Alright, they have to, I say the third one might be the finale or I don't know. But, um, whatever the third film is going to be, can't wait for that. But, um, let's see. Oh, yes. Crush and Squirt are back in the film. I was so happy. Um, the voice of Squirt was really good. Um, good to see Andrew Stan back as Crush. Ugh, these two never get old. Ah. <clears throat> let's see. Now, you know what? I gotta say, Marlin is in Finding Dory, um, and it, um, by the way, 
Um, loved Alpha Brooks as Marlon. Um, great to see him come back. But, um, you know, I used to... I like Marlon, but I don't like Marlon in this movie. You know, because... Why? Like, I mean, you know... He, he, I thought in the, in, in the end of the first in the of the first movie he won't be so overprotective and stuff. I mean he could be protective, but he's still being overprotective. Um, and he thinks that he can't trust Dory, or because she can't remember anything, which I can understand that. But come on, I mean come on, I mean she helped you go around the entire uh, the entire ocean looking for your son. And if, if you didn't, if if you didn't listen to her, like, no, no, she had some good ideas, and you never listened to her because you know. And guess what happened? You got trapped in a jellyfish forest. You um, and if you would listen to Dory, none of you would have gotten stung. So. Come on, you gotta, yeah, like Dory says, trust me on this. I mean, come on, Marlon. And she still doesn't trust Dory during the beginning of the film. And even after that giant squid chase, Marlon, like, snaps at Dory. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, Nemo almost got Ian, but don't put it on Dory. She can't, she can't help herself. Hey, the good news is, hey, look, the good news is, at least, like, I, Nemo's alright. So, I mean, I mean that was pretty scary when the squid caught Nemo. But oh my gosh! But don't, Mom, don't put this on Dory. All right, all right. Give Dory a break. And it's your fault that Dory got captured by the Mean Life Institute. I mean, <laughs> but I did like Marlon. But but I did like Marlon. And when him and Nemo found Dory, because he redeemed himself, he apologized to Dory. And he was actually more nice to him, more nice to her, and well, I mean, he's always been nice to her, but he he finally has some trust for her. Um, and no, I'm not gonna people. I don't know why people keep saying that they're gonna ship Marlon and Dory. No, I'm like, can we please keep? I mean, sure, Marlon needs to move on, but I mean, I I I prefer Dory as like she could still be a motherly figure to Nemo, but. Not a wife or... Alright, not fully. Alright? So, can can you please keep the lovey-dovey stuff out of Marlon and Dory, please? I don't want... Alright, I'm getting a little sick of people saying, I ship Marlon and Dory. No, I can't see that. Um, I, pref I think they're better as great friends. That's all I see. Um, I was kind of, I was kind of disappointed that Bruce wasn't in Fire and Dory. Yes, I know this isn't Bruce, but it's it's a great white shark, so it it's close. Um, but um, I I but I, I want to see. I think there was some because Bruce wasn't fine. Actually, Bruce was in Finding Dory, but in a deleted scene, which was a flashback of Finding Nemo, which and. I mean, everything was true, but then in the end, when Marlon beats up Bruce, that's that was funny. But I'm like, come on, Marlon! Oh, should, should everyone know that's not true? Because didn't didn't they see the sharks in at the end of Fire Nemo when they came to the to the on um, the Great Barrier Reef? Come on now. Um, but yeah, I, I do wish Bruce would have to have some screen time or Eric and Trump. But I want to say I want to see how they've been doing. A year after Finding Nemo. Um, let's see. <clears throat> oh yeah, Nemo. Um, I love Nemo. I've always loved Nemo. Um, and I forgot his name. Hayden something did a did a great job as Nemo. Not as good as Alexander Gould's, but still a great voice. So I so I say Hayden Hayden is. The uh, the second best Nemo voice. Uh, actually, what's funny is Alex Alexander Gould, the original voice of Nemo, he voiced um, one of the Marine Life Institute workers that were in the the, the truck that Hank and Dory took. <laughs> um, now um, let's see. I think 
I think that's kind of it. I gotta say, happy for happy five years to Fire Door. You know what? Get the tentacle off. Ugh, it's making my finger all uncomfortable. Anyway, um, I love Fire Door. I've always have. I actually, I, I watched it during the release date, June seventeenth. I just watched it right there. I was kind of shocked because usually during when we watch when movies are when movies are out during opening, like during the, the day of the opening on day one. The um, there's usually a pack of people around, but you know there was a lot of people in the line of Fire Dory, but not that much. And I was able to watch it. I watched it with my cousin, and I think I, I don't know if I watched it in 3D. I don't know, but still, I still love this movie. It was an emotional, entertaining, great voice acting, great characters. Just I can't think of any flaws about this. Same thing like same thing with Fire Nemo. I can't think of any flaws, flaws, or concerns about this movie. Um, if it's with if it's, if it's, if it's with characters, I would I would say it's Marlin, like the only flaw. But you know what? Overall, Fire and Dory is my second favorite Pixar sequel. Not as good as Fire and Nemo, but still a really wonderful film. And I give it a nine out of ten, and um, uh, it's it really. I used to be a real, I used to be a real hardcore fan of Fire Dory ever since it came out. I used to buy lots of merchandise, um, posters, books. Oh man, um, I, I'm still a big fan of the movie. I'm just not that hardcore anymore. Uh, oh. Pearl. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, please, guys, tell me in the comments, what do you think of Fire and Dory? Do you love it, or do you not like it? Alright? Yes, uh, right, give me your opinion about Fire and Dory. And, um, and, um, I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Happy, happy, um, five year, happy fifth anniversary, um, Fire and Dory. Um, and Andrew Stan. Love, I really love the film, and hopefully, if you do make a third move, movie, hopefully you get to be the, the director again, all right, because, I mean, you, you are a really great director, I love the movies, I love Fire Nemo, like, uh, Monsters, Inc., Wally, um, yeah, you did work on Toy Story, mm hmm love those, and Fire and Dory was a great sequel, can't wait. If you, whenever there was a third movie, I really can't wait for that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's it, everyone. This, this was my review on Finding Dory to, to celebrate the five-year anniversary. And I hope you all have a great day and be really useful.